What's up you guys, this is Alec on APS Plus and today I'm going to teach you how to play Digimon. So the Digimon TCG is a card game that I've been playing off and on for the last few months. I've been having a lot of fun and you know I've posted a few videos and we keep getting comments asking well how do you play? Can you make a tutorial? Well here we are. This is our Digimon tutorial. Let's hop in. The goal of the Digimon TCG is to play and digivolve your Digimon to destroy your opponent's five security and attack once more for game. The resource that we use is called memory. Your memory gauge is shared with your opponent, so the plays that you make during your turn directly affects the plays they make during theirs. Now we can talk about the Digimon themselves. Digimon have plenty of information on them, but the most important information is easily identified. At the top left corner there is the play cost, that's how much memory you will have to use to play a Digimon from hand. The circle underneath that is the Digivolution cost. Also inside that circle is the color and level of the Digimon it can evolve from. So Gabumon can only Digivolve from a purple level 2 Digimon. At the top right is the DP value or Digimon power. It decides which Digimon is stronger in battle. Above the name of your Digimon is its effects. This guy doesn't have one so I'll switch it with someone who does. To the left of your Digimon's name is its level. Digimon have levels 2 through 7. In Trainer Level 2, Rookies 3, Champions 4, Ultimates 5, and Megas can be Levels 6 and 7. At the very bottom underneath the Digimon's name is its Inheritable Effects. These are effects that Digimon pass on as they Digivolve. Option cards and Tamer cards are set up very similar to Digimon, except instead of having an Inheritable Effect, they have Security Effects that activate when revealed during a Security Check. Before we talk about playing the game, there are some basics to cover about your deck. Your deck consists of 50 cards, Digimon, Tamers, and Options. You also have a Digi Egg deck that is up to 5 cards. You can run up to 4 copies of any one card. Before you can start a game, both you and your opponent have to shuffle and place your decks in the deck zone, and then do the same to your Digi Egg decks and place them in the digi egg zone. Next you randomly pick 5 cards from the top of your decks and place them in the security zone. And then you draw 5 cards for your starting hands. Finally you will set up your memory gauge and set a counter at 0. When going first you do not get to draw, you will instead move straight to your breeding phase where you can either hatch an egg by flipping over a card from the digi egg deck or moving a digimon out of the breeding area. After that is your main phase where you are free to play digimon tamers and options, digivolve, and attack as long as you haven't moved the memory gauge past 0. Now we can digivolve our pagumon into gabumon like this. Digimon in the breeding area can still digivolve all the way to mega if you want, but they are unable able to use effects or be affected by effects, attack or be attacked. Gabumon costs 0 when digivolving from a purple level 2 so we don't have to move the counter. Don't forget to draw a card from your deck after each digivolution even in the breeding area. Next we will pay 2 memory to digivolve Gabumon into Gururumon and that will move the memory counter twice to our opponent's side and their turn now begins but they have 2 memory to spend. It's our turn again but this time we have 3 memories since our opponent was more aggressive during their turn. First we get to draw a card from our deck and then we move to our breeding phase. We can only have 1 Digimon active in our breeding area at a time so we will have to either move up a level 3 or higher Digimon or skip the phase entirely. Since we have 3 memory to work with we can digivolve our Garurumon into Were Garurumon and we move the counter to 0. It doesn't actually become our opponent's turn until it passes 0. Don't forget to draw. Time to talk about battle. At any point during your main phase you can have a Digimon attack either your opponent's security stack or their Digimon. Our opponent controls a Digimon but since it's in an unsuspended state we cannot attack it. A Digimon is always able to attack security even if they can attack a Digimon instead. We turn or suspend our Weregururumon to declare the attack. This is a good time to talk about inheritable effects. Weregururumon has all the inheritable effects of its previous evolutions but not his own. Before the attack completes we will activate his effects to draw one card and try the other. Now our opponent will check the top of their security stack and if it's a Digimon, we'll battle. Since it's a Digimon with less DP, we win the battle and it is sent to the trash. Typically in battle between Digimon, the stronger Digimon stays on the board, but since this was a Digimon checked in security, even if it were bigger than Weregururumon, it would still go to the trash, just taking Weregururumon with it. Which isn't so bad because if that were to occur, Weregururumon does have its on deletion inheritable effect. It's still our main phase so we can play this Labramon straight from our hand to the battle area by playing its play cost. It moves the counter to 3 but we have to resolve its effect first before our opponent gets to start their turn. On play effects are common. In order to activate a Digimon's on play effect, 
it has to be put into play without digivolving. It won't activate when moving from the breeding area or digivolving. You can play as many Digimon as you want in a turn, but once the memory counter moves past zero, it's now your opponent's turn. It's our turn again, but this time we have to unsuspend all our cards before we draw for turn. Our breeding area is empty, so we can hatch a new egg. We've got three memory again, so let's play our Tamer and Option cards. First, we'll play Matt Ishida and move the counter two to the left. Tamers can't battle, but they have beneficial effects that can give you an advantage over the course of a game. Our opponent has a Digimon with the blocker ability. This means it can intercept one of our attacks this turn. But we really don't have to deal with this by playing our option card, Deathclaw, by paying one memory. We can delete our Labramon to delete their Pedomon. This also activates Matt's ability and we gain one memory. Now we can attack their security again with Weragururumon and activate both its inheritable effects. To end our turn, let's digivolve into our Mega Digimon by paying 4 memory. Don't forget to draw. Now, next turn, we will be able to take advantage of Weragururumon's inheritable effect as well. The game continues until either you or your opponent has lost all their security and then take one final attack. There are no limits to hand size or the number of cards you can have in play. This will undoubtedly come up as you finish many games. And that's that. I hope I've covered the basics of playing the Digimon TCG. And if you like what you saw, you should go to your local retailer or your local card shop to pick up a starter deck or the recently released BT5 Battle of Omni. And check out the links in the description for some useful resources for getting started. I'll see you guys in the next one. Pass turn.